Welcome back to The Compressor Guru. Uh, this is the first time we've filmed since my surgery on August 1st, except for the update that we put up on September 11th. And I gotta tell you, I'm a little nervous. I've been back to work some, I've had a helper, but today I'm flying solo, so if I- Well, not to... totally solo. Well, no, the camera wife's behind the camera. Hi, everybody. So, uh, I'm a little nervous about the way the day's going to go. This is part two of the QT10 experiment where we're going to try to do a ring job a different way. Now, there are new rings. The cylinder's been honed. That's all standard stuff. Our cleanup's all done. That's all standard stuff. But what, what you usually do is you load the piston and connecting rod into the cylinder wall and then you take a crane and you put it down here and you hook it up to the crankshaft. You drop it the rest of the way down and you're assembled. There's two problems to this. With this particular compressor, this is the only access to the crankshaft and it's on roller bearings, not uh, Timken, not Timken bearings or you know tapered roller bearings. This is on ball roller bearings so you can take this cover off and it'll hang on the bearing on this side and you work through the end of the crankcase because this cover in this close-up here has to be in there because you can't fit it down after you have the pistons on so my solution is we, uh, just watch and learn. Anyway, here we go. So, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a rag and I'm gonna seal this hole up so that we don't drop a snap ring down in there and I have to tear it apart anyway. As I was laying around, actually it'd wake me up at night going, how am I gonna get this done? And I'd wake up going, okay, I don't want to drop a snap ring down in there because that would negate all this experiment we're doing. You have little sloths on, no, they're little koala bears. Aww. It was in the rag bag, Belle. I know. So this is a snap ring. I'm not sure I like my new snap ring pliers. Just bought them maybe they oh they need them tightened up so a little snap ring there's one of those on each side of the piston we're going to take them both off we might have done more in part one to continue with the work but when i got the snap ring pliers out my old snap ring pliers they were so wore out that the tips were wore into little tiny points and I couldn't get a hold of the snap rings. So I bought new, I actually bought two sets of snap ring pliers, one for the truck and one for the garage. And we are going to take that one out, which I realize you can't see any of because it's on the wrong side of the camera, but out it come that easy. Boy, it's nice to work with new tools. You sell those, don't you? Hey, I do sell uh. those. <laughs> okay. Tap that rod, or tap that piston pin out. And we're loose. And we have roller bearings, needle bearings actually, in here in the crank. Yeah. We actually have needle bearings instead of a bushing in the top of the connecting rod. I'm going to put a little oil on our rings. Maybe I'll put a lot of oil on our rings. The rings are scattered. I know what that means. I know you know <laughs> what that means. You don't need to put that on there yet? The well, gasket that you just threw off there? The gasket goes on here before we lower the cylinder down. Oh. Trust me, I, 
don't want to. I put these together. I put the three fifties together without that gasket, and going wait. I got to tear that all back apart. Now, many comp actually, every compressor I've ever worked on just had this conversation with the guy the other night. Uh, every compressor loads their rings through the bottom, and this is the normal way you load a piston into a compressor. So we compress the rings. There's a little bevel at the bottom of the cylinder and you push the ring into the groove down in the bevel bump it down I don't mean hammer it down I mean bump it down and I can't tell you how many times I've pinched my fingers doing this because you don't know that number It's too high of a number? <laughs> it is. It really is. We're going to get a small screwdriver. Wow. Take that. That's amazing. What? I was just thinking, would a little screwdriver help you? <laughs> You are such help. So, to help my big fat fingers, we're going to use a screwdriver and try to work her down. Look at how clean your fingers are. I haven't worked for a month. I know. Two months almost. It's two months today. No, two months tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yep, two months ago tomorrow, I had a tennis ball sized tumor removed from my right kidney and I'm doing well. Thank you God. I thank you guys for the prayers but I give God the credit. There we go. My father was a mechanic when he had heart surgery and didn't work for a while. I was amazed at how the color of his hands changed. Because he was a hands-on guy, too. There we go. That's two of them down. The third one's going to go easy. Mm -hmm. Watch that be the hang up because I set it up. No, on. it already started. Yeah, it did. And the fourth one, our, our oil ring, that three-piece set, and they go in easy because they're already sized. Okay, now we are going to put the snap ring in this side, and we're going to leave that pin right there so we can't accidentally put it down too far and not be able to get to the to it with the connecting rod. Mm -hmm. So here's the pin. So there is a method to this. I'm inventing the method. <laughs> <laughs> and is this a little scary? Yes. So put that back in. Get my big old fingers to fit in there. Because that's not the way this is usually done. And I believe we're in this time. Got it right in the slot that time. Yep, we're in. Okay, so when we go back together, I only have one ring that I have to put in because this one's already on and it's going to be the inside ring because we are going to leave the inside ring on the high pressure side so that I don't have to be in there working 
trying to get that ring back in after it's down in. And we are going to take our snap ring out and let the pin be free. Actually, let's try to do that a little different. We'll take it out of the other side. Because it's the same on both sides? It's the same on both sides, babe. And That way you can shoot that rod, pin, whatever it is, out the other side, and, and I to, can see. And may not have to take it out at all. out. Let's see if we can push the rod out without having a hammer on it. Take a big old fat finger. There we go. <sighs> see the snap ring still in place. I'm not going to have to try to do it in there. The high pressure rod also has needle bearings. Put that down in there. Add a drop of oil to our rings or more because last time went more. <laughs> now here's a little bevel and that's how we compress our ring and slip it down in. Why do you think those openings are there in that cast? To help you line it up. Nope. To let the oil pop in and out. Nope. To make you ask questions of me that I don't know the answers to. That's right. <laughs> the bottom of the, or the top of the connecting rod where it hooks to the crank actually spins up in every time it goes around and misses those. The top of the connecting rod on this side just goes in and out of the bottom of the piston but the connecting rod, let me grab one. So when this is going up and ah, we'll have to clean that now. It goes up and down like that and if those weren't, if those uh, places weren't out of there, uh -huh. it would uh -huh. and last three minutes and be blown up. Now I got to wipe the dust out of there. That's why that uh, is cut out on both sides in that casting. So, folks, a couple things have happened since we stopped the cameras. Why I took a phone call. And I want to talk about that phone call, and but we're gonna we're gonna put this in first, and then we're gonna talk to the phone, about the phone call towards the end of the episode. So stay tuned to the end of the episode. This one goes in just the same way, and it's actually a little easier for guys with big fat ham hock fingers because those spaces are there, and now you know why those spaces are in there. Before anyway. you put that in, yeah. Do you have to put that little snap ring back in? It's in here. It's in this side. Oh, it's in that side. That, oh, okay. I can't get it in there. That's what I was going to say. That's not right. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're right in the ball, honey. <laughs> She's more than just good looks, folks. A lot more. And the high pressure side is always easier because they're smaller rings and you've got that whole space to work with. You do have to be careful because these are cast iron rings and they will break so you don't go hammer on them. There we go. Someday when we're doing a ring job we'll do some real good close-ups and show the process of this but <laughs> this is secondary compared to what we're normally doing because we're still in the experiment stage of doing a ring job like this. Oh, there's what's holding me. That third ring is being difficult.
else. There we go. Maybe there we go. We're getting there. There we go. And that, oh, that snap rings in. So I'll push that oil ring just a whisker. There we go. That one's in. We are going to take our anti, uh, we're going to take our anti snap ring into the crankcase protection off. We are going to put our gasket in place cause. So you don't put any oil under it, right? No, it's going to stay still. Uh-oh. I have to turn it over. <laughs> so... How many ways can you turn that? Just one. <laughs> anyway, I hate to tell you how many times I have done a 350 Quincy, put it all together, and went, I forgot to put the gasket in. Up comes the connecting rods and everything, and put the gasket in and set her back down. I don't forget that anymore. I've got enough experience. Okay, so this is what we're using is the hoist. Yep. So after there's some repositioning here. And we want these to be about the same height. Folks, all over. Here's where the difficult part's gonna be. We've got to line up our pin and our connecting rod and push it through. And my finger's too big. Bingo! <laughs> That's one. Now for the easy one. Yeah, this one's gonna be tougher. So, but it can't, it's gonna be more aligned. This has to be more aligned because this pin through that rod is actually have this straight. All we have to do is get our height correct on this one. Okay. Now, I'm going to put the snap ring in this side before anything gets away from me. Are these the same size snap rings for both of them? Yes. Okay.
And yes, my heart rate went up significantly there, going, don't drop that snap ring down in the crankcase. Okay, that's in. Now, for the easy one. <laughs> So I turned the cameras off so I could think. While I'm thinking, I was able to get my pinky through while setting here, and I got real close, and I can feel the pinky, my pinky's lined up in that hole. I'm stuck. Got a pinky stuck in a bad place. I'm in trouble, Belle. What do I need to do? I don't know. I'm on the verge of losing a pinky. What do I do? I don't know. Oh, I know what it is. Put this down. A little more. Oh, whew, that forklift's creeping down. Oh. Okay. Oh, that's lined up. Looks like it's wiggling. Okay. Whew. Folks. I hope the camera's on because I almost lost the pinky. It definitely was safer to do it the other way. But this actually saves some time. I don't know about aggravation. I don't know about lost sleep. But I got to put the snap ring in here. And this did save some time. You see the complications of putting the rings in the normal way. I came close. I had my pinky through there. Pinky. <laughs> <laughs> Number five digit. The thumb's a finger, but all fingers aren't thumbs. I had my pinky through there, and I'm trying to line it up, and the forklift creeped down a little wee bit on the up and down. But when it did that, we left the hoist down here, and my finger came out, and it was a whole lot closer lined up, and we slipped the pin right in. Guys, I'm sorry we couldn't give you more close-ups of doing this, but uh, this is the first time, 44 years, this is the first time I've ever done it this way. And, and look, you still have 10 digits. I still have, I still have, <laughs> well, most of them. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but uh, we're going to crank this together. We might go high speed and just zip it together now but uh i gotta put that snap ring in before i forget we're gonna do that and then we'll just finish this job up So now it's just a matter of cranking our bolts down to push this down into place. Once I get this into place, we'll turn the crank over and we will make sure that everything's free. Remember, this compressor only had about 100 hours and knocked the rings out because they didn't take the break in oil out. So that being said, we didn't have to take the bottom end apart to do a ring job. 
And as nerve wracking as this was, we saved time. Do I recommend doing it this way? No. But if you ever have a situation where you have to do rings and don't have any reason to touch the bottom end of a QT series Quincy, you can get away with doing it this way. Will it rack your nerves? Will you lose a little sleep? I'm going to guess Maybe so. a little finger. <laughs> Maybe a little finger. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. <laughs> you know, there's people on the internet suggesting you need a raise. <laughs> I think you do too. Nothing plus nothing is nothing. I'll double it. Oh. <laughs> okay, so our, we're down in place. Nice tight new rings, no tight spots. That'll actually loosen up as the uh, everything finds its own spot. I want to talk to you about business practices. This week I had to do a favor for the brother-in-law, you know, the electric guru, and I had to run to advanced auto parts to get something for him. It was a $5 item. I walked in, I said, where are these? The guy walked back, pulled one off the shelf, handed it to me, we walked to the counter, and I set the item on the counter. I laid a $10 bill down, and the phone rang. And that man, if he was a quick draw artist, boom, like that. Now, there were three other people in the store. No, there were three other employees in the store, and I was the only customer in the store. And that guy, he took and he didn't let anybody else answer that phone. He would rather talk to a potential customer on the phone than take care of a guy with cash in his hand that's a sale right in front of him. This is a mismanagement of his time because the manager was there and two of his fellow co-workers were there, any of which could have answered that phone. This has happened in other stores, and they're worried about a potential sale for $100 that's on the phone that's calling around checking prices, rather than to take whatever is sitting in front of them. I'm a guaranteed sale. Why am I running on about this? Because he was on the phone for seven minutes, and I checked my phone a couple times for the time, because I don't wear a watch, I'm that kind of guy. I checked the phone for a couple times, and it got to seven minutes, and I thought, if I hit 10 minutes, I'm picking up my $10, walking out, because there's three parts stores within a quarter of a mile, and I was going to walk or drive to another parts store and get the part. One of his co-workers saw me checking the time and walked over and says, can I ring you up? Yes, you can. I didn't want to run to another store. Uh, they had what I needed. But guys, if you're in a retail setting... Don't go answering the phone when somebody's paying you. Literally, he could have, he might have been able to take my money and pick up the phone before it quit ringing. This is bad business, and I am going to be writing to their corporate office. I'm going to send them an email saying, if this is company policy, it's bad policy. Especially when there's three other guys in the store who could have answered that phone. Yes, camera wife? Pick me, pick me. What he could have done was, even if he was the only one in the store, picked up the phone and said, Can you Could hold? you hold, please? Didn't ask to do that at all. Mm -hmm. it, it was just bad business, you know? And I've been in business forever, it seems like. And I've seen this a few other times, and it's just bad business. So, guys, uh, if you have yourself a little business, or even if you work for somebody else, be a good customer service guy and take care of who's in front of you instead of who might be on the phone. Business lesson over. Back to this. So that's the experimental way to do a ring job without going into the crankcase. It saved time but I'm not going to tell you it was easy. Our first concept was to have the pistons on the connecting rods hang the cylinder up here and work the rings into the cylinder upside down. Well, upside down to being the way we do it here, which is upside down. 
so I'd say right side up. Can you follow that? Anyway, we tried that, we cut that, that didn't work. <laughs> and uh, this works. If you're in a pinch, different way to do rings, do I recommend it? No. Is it possible? Yes. Will it save a little time? Yes. Can you lose a pinky? Possibly. Be very careful. Folks, we'll be back with a one more episode in this. It will be part three, and it's where we'll throw the heads and valves on. But this is the end of part two. You now have a discovery of a new way to do rings. 44 years in the business. This is the first time I've ever done one like this. It does look successful. So... Thank you. Have a great day. God bless. Come back for part three. We're going to set the heads and valves on and we'll finish this up and get it to the customer. God bless. Have a great day.